Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hackers Misadventures in Scale Modeling. Today, I am going to try a new thing. I'm going to try to do a f episodes episodes of what I would call Feature Friday. Now, these will be strictly about models, you know, but most, like, this this video I'm doing is about a tour at AFX Factory making the 124th scale Spitfire Mark 9s are doing, hence why I'm wearing the appropriate t-shirt. Anyways, I'm going to be strictly do, doing finding videos on aircraft and maybe ones that are being uh, restored or historical, but I'm not going to. Tr I'm going to try to stay away from videos that that uh, delve into whether this aircraft is better than that aircraft or whatever. I was like recently I was watching a video on the F-35 and the guy was going, well, you know, this is this and this. And that. I, no, no, I has nothing to do with modeling. That's just strictly analysis and that. We're into the aircraft, like walk-arounds and stuff like that. So, so for um, oh, okay. Just remember, if you do find find a video or have a video to to upload, want want me to do, I can do it on here. That's no problem. Anyways, f no further ado. Let's. Uh, watch the show. I also would like to uh, acknowledge the person who did the video. It's MOS6510 Models who did the video and uh, subscribe to their channel and thanks a lot for the video. It was very interesting. So let's go on. I have my coffee already so let's go i was invited by dale and the airfix team to the factory in new haven where they are manufacturing this kit what a day firstly i just want to say thank you to dale to the whole of the airfix crew to mark thompson who's the managing director of plastech who owns the factory where this is being manufactured for a fantastic day it was so insightful um, the day started off with a talk by Luke the researcher and Chris the designer um, about this tooling and the reasons why they went for this then we had lunch with some lovely Marks and Spencer sandwiches thanks Dale and then we went on a factory tour with Mark Thompson and it was a delight there's so much going on in this field I filmed as much as I could of the actual factory tour right the way from the history of Plastec, the fact that they build quick build so you will so you will see a lot of these kits in the video i presume you know as we're walking around you'll see them boxing up those kits and uh as you know i've done the jeep this week so it's uh it was quite nice to uh to see where the quick builds are manufactured and then to go on and see this being you know made and uh, the whole premise behind it the problems they've had how when it comes to quality control i don't think there's an airfix kit out there that has as much quality control i'm just saying okay um even down to when they find sync marks and they adjust the tooling to try and make to, to, to make sure there's no sync marks when you get your kit i just uh that sounds good uh, it's been a long time since i actually seen a video of kits being made and that was like 30 years ago so lots of a lot of things have changed and I'd be interested to see how and what they do during the manufacturing process so let's go have a look I want to point out that the audio may vary in quality throughout this tour unfortunately it's a very loud building so I've tried to enhance the voice the best I can and also they had radios playing so so I don't get a copyright strike I have actually tried to dull out the background noise because of that as well 
Also, if you're not a subscriber, please feel free to click subscribe and ring that bell to be notified when I release a new video, if you're enjoying my content. Anyways, we'll start off with meeting up with Mark and the history of Plastec and the relationship, and we'll go through and see how they manufactured this kit. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm public knowledge, there we are. Yeah, so, I saw him on the telly. That's it. So, <laughs> Let's just give you a little bit of history about Plastec. So Plastec was formed in 1983, primarily as a tool maker. So it was an injection mold tool maker before it did any injection molding. So Plastec has the ability to work with the customer from an initial concept. So you can come in here with an idea. So say for example, you wanted to make your own model outside of Airfix. You know, we could hey. find it, develop it, produce it, <laughs> tool it, mold it, and deliver it. So yeah. the whole idea is to, is to offer the complete supply chain under one roof. So from tooling, through to a finished end product, we can do the whole lot. Well, you make tooling here as well, do we you? We make tooling here as well, yeah, okay. we make tooling offshore in China as well. Yeah. See, tooling is very expensive as, you, as you're aware in the UK. Tooling is usually the bit that kills all models, you know, and mm. decides whether it's going to move forward or not. It's not the actual production. Production costs are relatively low, but obviously tooling is where the investment is. But we've tried to, um, on this particular project, work with local suppliers. So so the leaflets are printed uh, in the local town in the local town of Seaford, just down the road. The boxes are produced um, furthest away Portsmouth, and then we've got another guy that produces the base boxes in Upstory. So within that sort of 50, 60 mile radius, everything is produced around us, and we are producing and making a whole product. So let's have a let's have a wander through next door. So so in this facility we have the we have the ability to design and manufacture tooling, maintain tooling and modify tooling. So the tooling when it arrives with us from China comes in crated, we'll uncrate it, we'll open it, we'll degrease it because it's all grease for shipping, we don't want any corrosion in transit. We'll then take those tools, strip them, as we are with this tool here, inspect them, test the water, because obviously you want to make sure it's got a water flow through the tool. Water is key to our process and key to the processing of all the products. You know, it's like an engine, we don't want it too hot, we don't want it too cold. We want it as a stable, consistent processing temperature. The material requires that, because if we try and inject hot plastic into a cold mould, it will affect the flow rate and affect the field. So, moulding is, moulding is a set of flawed parameters that are, you try and design around what should work, and obviously everything we produce is a one-off. So, as with all this tooling, we're not producing anything you know, that's been produced before. It's unique in its configuration. Yes, there's been Spitfire yeah. tooling before, but not laid out the same. So, lots of tests, lots of development. So even before we what was the picture just behind his head? I hope we get a better better look at that, but it looks interesting. It looks to me like it looks like to me it I see uh oh never mind. I can't bear, I can't see it. Even with my glasses on. We actually go to that steel, we run a computer fluid dynamics program called Moleflow just to see do are the parts compatible. And the sprue frame is, is more important than the part because it's how it balances the fill, yeah. how we get packed parts, how we get parts that are filling correct. And it's certainly where we, we're moving into the thinner wall sections like the wings now, where we're trying to get them more authentic to scale. The sprue is critical for delivering the right amount of material to the right place and getting them to the right part. So, two in production, guys, and obviously. All modern CNC equipment, we've got four CNC's. So very very little programming online, very much programming offline. So we'll take the CAD information that the guys have produced and we'll use that to create machining parts for a CAM, the computer aided machining. Follow me next door. <laughs> Production guys, and I have to see. Take a look at that. We've got four CNC's, so very, very little programming on library, much programming offline. So we'll take the CAD information that the guys have produced and we'll use that to create machining parts for a CAM, the computer aided machining. Follow me next door. Ah, here we go. Actually, not a bad looking picture though. 
the F-22 is burning a hole in the side of the Messerschmitt 109, but it looks good. Well, too bad I couldn't have that behind me. <laughs> right, this is, this, is, this is building one, moulding one. So, so we've got three buildings, moulding one, tooling number two, number three unit, production and warehouse. So this is our key moulding manufacturer facility. So you'll see various moulds dotting around. Every time you see a mould with a yellow ATML number, that's an Airfix mould. Yeah. So that's an Airfix product, that's an Airfix product. And you'll relate the, the relate part number, on the mould number relates to the part number. So, we well, can identify what's in there. So there we are. That's a quick build McLaren mould. This tool yeah. is quite old now. It's about eight, nine years old since we produced them, since we produced the McLaren. The moulds are adaptable to go into a range of moulding machines. So our moulding machines start at 80 tonne, plant force down the far end, right the way up to 380 tonne. So the one we're going to look at today is a 380 tonne, which is currently moulding uh, Airfix, uh, Airfix Spitfire components. So this is a new machine. It's a microprocessor control machine. So we can drop the machine in. The machine is adaptable. We have to tell it what mould we're putting in, what size of mould. It's all, we calibrate everything to suit the job that we're running at the time. So we can run various materials uh, as well. Sorry. Play. Play. Turn that off. Yeah, we get copyrighted for that. <laughs> yeah, we that one Yeah. So, Within our moulding scope, we're able to take a various range of sizes of the tools. So obviously, the bigger the mould, as you can see, the bigger the parts normally. And what's happening on most modern kits now is you're not getting one tool frame on a sprue. Although we have with the fuselage there, so, so we're seeing up to four sprues, four separate sprues, four tool frames yeah. on one tool. So that keeps cooling yeah. costs down to a certain certain degree, but it makes it takes complexity up mm -hmm. because you've got a lot more to control yeah. on, on tool frame. So yeah. in this 380 ton here. There's that new bag cap they're doing, isn't it? <laughs> we're moulding we're two frames, either frames L and Brittany for the J and the J. D and 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 J. D the shot that's come out and we inspect against that. So what we're trying to do here is, is use a visual, is a visual inspection to make sure are all the components present? Is there anything obvious that's short or missing from that tool frame? Well, yeah, guys, let you use that. So the next one out, give me a complete frame. If you can. So, so we'll check that, we'll inspect that. So what, what happens is you get to learn the jobs. You get to know what are the problem areas, what's likely to be the issue that we, that we see coming out. So the moulding machine is basically in two halves. This half is what we call the clamp side. So this is it's basically opens and closes. Makes you wonder some of the other kits that we've had from Airfix that have been sh short shot. Are they are they being made in other other factories in other parts of the world? And are they using the same method of checking the molds? We don't know. But this shows us that they're taking this 124th scale Spitfire serious. And then spits the bit out. This end is the bit that makes it hot and squirts it. Ah, so yeah. we'll take a raw material granule, um, which is uncoloured, we'll add a pigment to it that's, that's compatible with the material. That's most important. Obviously, sometimes you get what's called a universal polymer, universal mass match, that won't always be 100% correct for the material it's going into. Like poly base. So if you put a poly base pigment in, yes, you'll get a moulding out of it, thank you. But what you'll find is it doesn't, it, it won't glue as well, it won't behave as well. So that is a complete tool frame as moulded. Wow. You'll notice we have a central oh, spar sprue. There we are, feel it. It's very slightly more. Yeah, it's you'll feel it the thick more. section. If you feel the thick section, oh, yeah. that holds yeah. the heat more. Okay, yeah. Okay. That was at 235 degrees less than 60 seconds ago. And then just cools, is it? Yeah, yeah. it's cool. So the mould is, is the mold has a water system to maintain it at a constant temperature. So we're not trying to keep it too hot, we're not mm. trying to keep it too cold. So we have a fixed half and a moving half. One half of the mould is retained on the on the fixed half pattern. 
this is where the injection point is. So we have the, the feed system, the sprue, that's where it feeds into, then drops into a runner. And the runner is basically a road system, so it's like a series of blocks that you'll see here. So this is a road network, and the road network here is purely to distribute the plastic into the correct positions of the mould, fill it. So it's important that when we're filling it, a part that's very fragile like that is filling at the same rate as a part of the same size. So that mass might be a thousand times greater than that part there. So we've balanced the road, the runner system, the feed system, so at the same point that is filling, this should be filling. You don't want to fill that one too much because you'll overpack it before you fill that. Key to this as well is the air evacuation. There's 380 tons of plant stores holding this closed. While we're putting plastic in, we're getting air out the mould. If we get an air restriction, we'll either get a burn mark, yeah, or we can get an air bubble, or we can get a short moulding if the air's meeting resistance. It's hydraulics, it's fluid dynamics. So this is coming in, and it's displacing air to allow it to fill. But at the same point, we don't want the material to escape from any area that we don't want it to. So the areas which we call shut off, it's, it's basically the wall of steel around the part to maintain the integrity of that definition, that component. Obviously, yes, some flash is, uh, you know, is inevitable, but you, you don't want new tools ideally, if they're shut off correctly, any wisps, any edges, any, any dodgy areas. So once we've moulded it like that, we very simply break it off as a, as a frame. The frame will then go for inspection. That part is screwed. The policy is zero landfill, so we'll take that, we will regrind that, and we'll either repurpose this at a lower dose into, a, into another component, or we'll take that and we'll add it into another moulding and another product. It's the styrene, it's the styrene. So we can add that to ABS at a very low, typically 10% mix rates. I've worked in uh, mold injection places before, doing the same, basically the same thing, and it, it that's common. It's called regrind, and they they put 10% of the regrind into a vir, in, into virgin material, too much, and because the plastic is now different than the virgin, too much would would uh, affect the quality of the plastic. So the limit for them probably is ten percent. Other places I've worked for, worked at is five percent, but it just saves it going to the landfill because that's a waste of money. You could, when you could re reclaim that material. Like that. However, that probably be more forgiving in something like the wing or the fuselage than on parts that are highly highly detailed. Mm. So problem areas on this particular screw are like the pipe work where you've got very very small parts very very small components mm. so typically filling that will be straightforward and easy and it's, it's easy to see if that's a full shot or not whereas on there it's very very hard to see if you've got everything has that stuck in and what we're relying on here this as I always say this is not a this is not a, a packing job it's not about taking bits mm. out and putting it in a box it's about taking it out of the tool inspecting it mm to make sure it conforms to the standards, to make sure that there are no defective moulding uh, parts in there, any short shots. What you can't do with moulding is take anything for granted. Mm. You can have a hundred that will be perfect, and then you'll have one that you'll find all of a sudden has developed a problem. What's quite common on new tooling like this is it, is it hogs in. So when you've got the shut off, you've got fresh steel on fresh steel, you can start to create a little burr. And the burr that comes over, it might only be a few microns, but it's just enough to start grabbing at the moulding and start holding it within, within the press. So what we're doing, typically doing is come back in, diamond file, very, very fine stones, and just break those edges off, just take that off. Not enough for it to flash, mm. but you say, this here, this here we've seen problems with this, shearing and snapping. Such a thin section, obviously, in scale, and obviously the force, you're pushing that out the mould with yeah. the force. So, mm. so, obviously, we've got lock over, we've got an injection, we've now got mould cooling, so, the toggle will release in the back here, you'll see that move first, and that will release the lock pressure, and then it will pull open, you'll hear it come open, then you'll see ejection, the ejector pins will come forward, push it forward, but because of the amount of surface area that's holding it, we will still pull that screw off of the pins. Well then shut the door, close it, safety bar, there's a safety bar, all the machines are safety control so you can't, can't close it with your arm in there and then what we'll do is we'll go through the inspection process so it's warm there thicker section it'd be warmer down the bottom and also if I snap it there 
it's it's more it's softer yeah. there because of it's retaining the heat. You see, when you yeah. when you bend it like that and snap it, what's happening there? That is the raw polymer. You stressed it. So what you've done there is you stressed out the master match content. If you look at that, you'll see that there'll be hundreds and hundreds of little grey dots, but because it's greater in its stress. So there we are. Hopefully I'm ready. So bring them off. Don't break them. But also we're looking we're looking all the time. Is it a straight screw? Is it a bent screw? Is anything snapped? And again, these here, these are here for, to help for the ejection. So in other words, when we can't put a pin mark on something, we can't get a pin. These are also overspills. So areas where it wants to vent or gas, we can then use these to flow fresh material into. Sorry, can you make a mess? It's alright. So, where's the... So what we'll do is we'll keep continuously monitoring and signing off what's going on so that's interesting the how they are uh, how they uh, track who's who's checking it and what date and that so if you if you get when you say, well, I got a short shot and you get a hold of Airfix and they send you another one, that's why they ask you for the identification. Let me move my thing here. Let me move my thing here. See, this is the identification that tells, tells them who did what. We have a historical record there of production over what happened on what day. So if we do get a problem, we've always got a reference to come back and say, well, no, mm -hmm. hang on a minute, mm -hmm. it's a fresh problem. Yeah. We haven't sent stuff out last week that's got this problem because we can see that was complete, that was okay. So those parts will be reused and go back into product, but at the moment on this batch run, we're monitoring right the way through. Mm -hmm. This is a double inspection job, so although, yes, taking it out of the machines are one person operation, to get the mm. correct amount of inspection, we need two people on it, yeah. and we bag it. The material will, it's electrostatic, it will draw. I wonder how many of those sprue that have, uh, have damaged parts, that they strip some of the parts off for, for um, when you say, well, I'm missing the right-hand side of the cockpit. I wonder where that's how, where they, probably where they get their spare parts from. Draw out the, any dirt, any imperfections. If you see kit sometimes, like an old kit you'll get out sometimes and you'll see it's got brown or like a wash mark all over it. That's because it's drawn down the dust out there. So we will bag and seal it as quick as we can, straight away. And again, no contaminants, there's a silicon release agent there. So we can have a silicon release agent maybe to get the tool up and running, but you can't run it in production because any silicon that gets into that material means you won't be able to paint it. Right. And then, yeah, again, some offshore products you will see that they're running at all where they yeah. scrape, continue spraying mulberries. They're getting it running, but they've not thought about that you've got to paint it. That's right, yeah. So you've got to bath it, scrub it, sand it down to remove, you know, soak it, clean it thoroughly before you can paint it. What we're trying to run here is dry product. It's product that's in the, in the correct material and it's dry. So we will, in theory then, we won't have to wash this before we paint it. That's in theory, interesting. In theory, yeah. yeah. In, in theory, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, still, obviously still wash it, still, yeah. you know, still clean it. But in theory, it's got no yeah. silicon yeah. in it. There's nothing in that that should have an adverse effect. That is pure styrene. Yeah. So, you know, well, I, I think um, one of the issues we've had over the years from all manufacturers, not just Airfix, is QC. Yeah. But it just seems, you know, that some of it will pick it up on the floor, put it in the bag, and away you go, yeah. you know. but. Here it's just seems a bit. Oh no, I'm just saying that you no, know. But, but we, yeah. we, we, we've, I've seen kits that I bought which have got plier marks. <laughs> yeah. So they're running that off, and then they're in the tool with a pair of pliers, pulling the bit out that's got stuck, drop it in the bag, seal it. Yeah. No, what comes off there must run clean. Yeah. And must run through, and it's and it's, it's, it's yes, it is more work. It is more time consuming, and it's what you'll see here is yes, these tools are, are with us for a period of time before yeah. we're ready to go to production. Yeah. But it's development. You know, you don't go to you don't build a racing car and expect to go out and do laps. You go testing, and we will do yeah. testing. We will look at what's working, what's not working. I don't think any of you guys want to come and I'll stop it next yeah. process. I'll open Sorry, it up. Sorry, just yeah, to watch you open it up, and then we can take a video clip. Yeah. Is so, that all right? Yeah. 
So, sorry, Matt, can you just get right, inside no, your you chairs? Will. Thank you. It's a hard life in a concert. It is, yeah. Yeah, it's for keeps. So it's about 45 seconds between shut and open, is it? Yeah, it's, uh, what's it, it's 50 seconds, I think. Well, it's probably 45, 50 seconds. So, so mould will open. There we are. Yeah. Part will eject. We will then open the door. We will then go in and we yeah. will... The part comes off. We don't pull it off. We'll yeah. force it against anyway, but it doesn't want to go. There's the tool in its raw state with the ejector pin tool. Yeah. That mould... What more yeah. he likes, he likes consistency. Yeah. So I won't stop it for two No, that's fine, yeah, get yeah. that. But, uh, so yeah. then what we do there, if we shut the door, we make sure the mould is in a single cycle, yeah. push the blue button, pins come back, mould comes in, next stage is lock over. Toggle goes on, clamp force, 380 tonnes clamp force, we then get injection, you hear it, yeah. that's the plastic going in. The crack is purely mechanical movement, as that plastic forces its way in there. He's now screwed back and picking up the next dose. This machine is servo controlled. So the motor will only be on using energy when it's doing something in the operation. So it's, it's a stop, stop start technology for a car. So the machine has now turned itself off. It's now in cooling. It will now start itself back up, open up again. So typically a machine of this calibre will be saving 40% electricity of the machine, say a previous generation ago. So again, this is a brand new machine. This is, this is, this is, this is new two weeks ago. And we're, we're continuing updating. This is a brand new machine? Brand new. Two weeks ago? Two weeks ago. So, wow. Okay. So, yeah. what, what we set on the machine, what we ask it to do, we know we're getting it, it's parameters. Yeah. Very, very accurate. And here I stood up to the plate, I pressed the button, got the machine working, and then I was able to take the moulding out of the tool. So there will be a kit somewhere with four sprues that was made by me. <laughs> <laughs> right, press the button. This one here. That's it. You'll see the pins go back. Mole closing locks over. Process starts again. Wow. Um, uh, uh, Julie, how many are we doing a day at the moment? What's the current output on this? It's about, uh, yeah, five hundred a day at the moment. Yeah. What we try here, yeah, we're running a twenty-four hour shift. So typically, you know. It's, it's, a, it's very, very simple. If it's 30 seconds, it's 120 now. If it's 60 seconds, it's 60 now. So you just, you just mold it up. So at 45 seconds, what is it, 90 odd an hour, isn't it? So you're running 90 parts an hour. Yeah. And as long as you can open and close that, as long as you keep the plastic going in, yeah, 10 hours is 900. Yeah. But again, what we, what we are doing at the moment to try and hit the delivery performance targets yeah. is rather than put that in and run that for a, a batch of 10,000, we put it in, run 1,000, pull it. Pull. Sorry about that. I had a phone call I had to take. So the idea is build up the stock so they can be flowing out thousands of fifteen hundred units per week. I know the market obviously finds that. Oh, well, you know, parts here, you know, it's not like say it's not open the doors, ten thousands come out. And I think it, what, what hopefully you'll get across to your readers and your viewers is that it is a labour-intensive process, that it is a slow process. There we are. Up the corner. Up the corner. Just feel it. Come on. Wow! Look at that. There we are. Whoa! Thank you very much. Brilliant. I know. Yeah, it's like all these cranes, yeah. So you put, yeah. Well, yeah. That, that's that's about a ton of weight in there. Wow. So we lift wow. it. That, that's what, in moulding terms, that's relatively small. Yeah. Like five tons as big as we go yeah. next door. Yeah. But you lift it in. So what you do is you lift it in, you drop it in. Yeah. You'll fix it to the fixed half platform first. You'll clamp it in. Effectively, it's like changing an engine in the car. Yeah. The, this this machine doesn't know what it's doing. What we do is we t we, we fit the engine in the mould yeah. and we program it to a set of parameters. Yeah. And then what we may find, we may find we'll have a set of processing conditions. So we create a window, that's our processing window. So within that window, we know it works. So we've, we've told the machine, if you're at 50 seconds and it has, you've not filled up, your alarm out. The machine will alarm and say, hang on guys, something's happening here, come and have a look. Yeah. But it's, it's a very consistent process. And because it's a brand new piece of kit, what we're asking to do, there's no wear. So it's not like, not, you know, moulding machines are like cars. So if you buy a car with 150 brake, in 10 years it's only 140 brake. Yeah. Whereas this is giving us exactly what we want. So by having this sort of machinery, it allows us to very closely, what we ask of it, we know we're getting. That's a very consistent process. Let's have a wander along and look at... Uh... Wow. One that's not running at the moment, we've got the huge garages. So, fuse alarms on, and then we'll have a look at the fuse alarms on. 
Much smaller salt, a bit more smaller machine. Oh. So, oh, that's not bad, boy. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> This is interesting, the fuselage halves. So this is the tooling for the fuselage of the Spitfire 124 scale. You can see there, um, the way you um, convex that side and then concave that side. You can just see the, the, the detail there of the rivets as well. They're pretty smart. There are, as, as with all kits, at the, at, the begin, at the beginning, they are very technically challenging. You, yeah. you, there's a lot of work. So yeah. you produce a new mould, it's not just a case of drop it in the machine, turn yeah. it on, walk yeah. away. There is always development, there's tweaking, mm. there's tuning of gates, the runner system. Very rarely do we have to touch the part, yeah. but we are continually looking at What's the fill rate? You know, like, like yeah. the, the sink marks there. So there was a sink mark there that was very difficult to get rid of, and we've, we've, we've been making tiny little tweaks, not to yeah. the moulding, but to the fill system, to try and improve it. Yeah. So, and it's it's it's, it's, con it's continuously monitoring. So overall, it's yeah, it, it takes a few weeks of getting it in mm. and running it. Yeah. And you know, just because Deeply, you, you kind of like if it's like got a bit of a, a tight spot, you would then grind that a little bit out. To make it go Typically in. Typically hand work it, so we're we're meeting yeah. with very fine you know, diamond stones. Yeah. Taking the edge off, get, it, get it to where it needs to be. And, and but mm. once you've done that, it's not just yeah. a question of you know leave it, walk away, continually monitoring. So primary one, my guy, the team's here. Mm. The team is here for quality first. Yeah. Boxing it is a subsequent you know you know part of the process to the quality. Mm. Quality, quality, quality. Anyhow, there's no point in putting bits in a box that ain't any good. Mm, excellent. And it's it, that's that's what we are about. Brilliant. Well, it's great to see you. you know, so I remember when I saw you come in, I thought, I've seen him on the telly already, because you <laughs> must do the quick builds. And then, um, yeah. you know, we're now seeing it being made here. But as hoping, as I still feel that, you know, the frustration we've had is that kits are being not released because the boat hasn't come to Dover, it's gone to Rotterdam. I know. So we're now, yeah. we've got a manufacturer in here, we're, there's not that time difference. No, and, you know. and we can, you know, if from a moulding point of view, if you've got yeah. consumer product boxes, decals, mm. and things, we can turn this off and turn this on. Yeah. Um, you, know, it's, it's, it, you know, if we've got the mould, we can pick it up and drop it in the machine. Yeah. Usually within a week to ten days of an order, yeah. we're able to process that order. And yeah. We do so it's a consumer stock. Mm. I love dearly. You know, part part of the reason you know we are working for Hornby Airfix yeah. is I love the brand. I grew yeah. up. With, I grew up with the brand. Yeah. You know and. I, I, I was saying to someone earlier, I knocked on Mike Waters' door, a director at the time, yeah. and said, I want to be doing this work. And yeah. I, I I'll take a job there. there. Months, and he said, come in, sit down, you've got 10 minutes. Yeah, that's why yeah. I had the story. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And he said, yeah. yeah he said, if, if, if you're not a fit for us, leave me alone. Yeah. And very, very quickly, I was talking to the, the then time uh, MD, and we established Quick Build, and then we subsequently followed that in with Glue Kids. You know, I'd love to be, think we could produce it all here. We, we have the capability is whether it's commercially viable. Yeah. And obviously, at, at this price point, it's viable. At lower price points, mm. less viable. Yeah. But this is a serious, you know, this is a premium product. This is for a serious modeler. Yeah. This is not an impulse buy. This is a planned buy. This yeah. is, you're buying this because you want this. Mm. You, you have an expectation on quality. You have an expectation on detail. Yeah. And yeah. what we're saying, it's not just like a cheap kit, it's a collector's item. It's something right. that you're going to yeah. spend hours, days, even mm. weeks or months building. So you you do want, yeah. there is almost going to be a reverence to it when you build it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and, and it's, it's, a his, it's, it's a historic model as well. And, you know, and the thought of the Spitfire being manufactured anywhere but here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah in, exactly. In, in yeah. Way, yeah. I'm doing 22,000 as well. That would yeah. be the golden number, isn't yeah, it? Like, yeah, you know, that's, yeah. that's it. How know, far have you done so far? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and obviously, you know, not today, but we do get the flyovers from the Spitfires as yeah. well. And yet, yeah, it's an iconic aircraft, and, and it deserves to be given, you know, the attention to detail that it's given. Yeah. And obviously, Fantastic. I'm hoping that obviously the people that will buy it, you know, your viewers, yeah. you, know, the, your, you know, your readers, will appreciate the level of work that's got into oh, the Oh, definitely, yeah. Level. 
No, it's, you know, but then again, me personally, it's got an Airfix sticker on it, I buy it anyway, don't know that. <laughs> you can see my pre-order on it on the, in January. You've got a problem there. I am, I am, yeah. yeah. It's an illness, it is it an is illness. illness. It yeah. is an illness, yeah, it is Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, different, I think, different colours. Not really, what about four? Yeah, yeah. inspection again. And you know the little details like the air fix round or Samson's at the bottom of the box. That was a suggestion from my packaging supplier. Oh, yeah. He's got a, he's got he's got a new piece of kit. That's yeah. I can, I've got this machine there that can cut and fold and do all this. Yeah. I can put the air fix logo in the box. So, so you embossed it. There's that part of it. it. Yeah, it's that, that was a little, lovely touch. That yeah. was you know. <laughs> and it's just it's just a little bit of attention. Just pass. Excuse me. Sorry guys. Sorry, Gary's in the way. <laughs> You've had your 20 minutes. <laughs> Yeah. So just to have that in the bottom of the box. Yeah. Just so when you're building it. That's cool. Just yeah. that little bit of attention to detail. It's, it's an attention to detail product. Yeah. Or because you thought, oh, I've got a new machine. We'll try we'll it. Try and that. then yeah, and we'll, it, it does. Uh, yeah. We're when you charge it five p extra for the box, <laughs> I can see all that. Make, I, I guarantee with, that. I guarantee that doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> but it's from a Dale, five p. But, but, but from a commercial point of view, yeah, yeah it's stunning. It, yeah. It's, it's a free detail. Yes, yeah. It was a, you know. A little bit more in the tooling, but it's just nice. It's just showing that it's not just a box. Yeah. Yeah. This box is actually based upon the Bentley 112 box. <laughs> yeah. That's, it that's is. the actual yeah. size of the box because that was yeah. what we that was the that was the market intention mm. to use that size that size of box. And yeah. because we, we you know we, we did the test shots into the Bentley box, yeah. this was tools from it. Right. It did, you know, it's, it's 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 the it's the what's what's wrong, what's right, you know. Yeah. So there's the box. Yeah. You'll notice. When you turn it that way, everything's right. Way. When you turn it that way, everything's yeah. Yeah, that's it. it. So that's, that's an airfix straight. That is yeah. yeah. And again, all yeah. of these things, all of these things matter. How the box folds up, you know, even down to how when the box is sitting right, so you don't damage the edge of the box. The, the very slight overlap, you know. So oh. even that, even that was pre-sorted out. Yeah. So when it folds down, yeah. yeah. So all these little things that we, you know, this box has been through two or three iterations. The shipper carton, the shipper carton, as you probably will know. Yeah. Even that's been thought out. So we've got a, we've got a shipper carton box now that fits the box exactly. So each one of these is now boxed individually. So we're not shipping. So so from a customer point of view, when it's actually packed, it's mm. packed into a shipper carton. So the risk of the box getting damaged, scratched, yeah. creased is reduced because it's already in shipper carton. Yeah. And again, environmental. We're now on the paper tape. Yeah. Saw rather that. Than the plastic. Yeah. And you probably mm. notice we've got brown paper in some of the devices so, um, yeah. to try and reduce, mm. try and reduce the amount of plastic that we're using yeah. in packaging. It was good, that, so yeah. You know. It was a box within a box within a box. That's what got me because yeah. you 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 at the moment you've having to have the poster as well. Yeah. So you must have loads of posters somewhere. We well, not here. They're coming out separately. They're, oh, they've been dispatched directly. Oh, are they now? Yeah. Because mine came with the poster in with it, and I was like, "Whoa, look at this!" Like that, it was yeah. really good. Yeah. So but, um, yeah, the, obviously yeah, the, the color scheming, mm. um, uh, prints, the instruction leaflets again, all done, all done locally. Yeah. The guy there master printer the care yeah. and detail that he's put in the color matching on that mm. you know getting the getting the crispness of that all counts for delivering a quality product yeah and it's yes okay yes and you could make an instruction leaflet for five pence ten pence less mm. but at the level the quality of grade of paper again yeah. it's sustainable paper it's recycled it's, it's mm. made from recycled material you know potentially on the outside side of the cart and you could you know it's we could mm. offer potentially a carbon neutral offset yeah. We're not able to do it across the whole product range, but that is something that's, yeah. that's possible. Just plant a couple of trees, yeah. Yeah, you know? that's, that's it. So there's yeah. the, the, and now, is uh, it right that you've got um, recycle tabs on these? Because they can be recycled, can't they? The, the sprues can, yeah, this, yeah. The sprues can be recycled. Yeah, there's, there's a there's recycle tab on the thing, yeah. isn't there? Yeah. yeah. These, could go, these can go straight. Obviously, we all know. Yeah. We could all cut the sprues up and use them for stirring paint and making aerials and things like that. But this sprue here is, is, is exactly the same uh, material and could be put into the, into the rubbish bin as recycled. And again, it's, uh, it's got the correct logo on it. Correct logo on it, yeah. Yeah. So it identifies what mm. category it is yeah. on there. So, mm. yeah, just again putting back. Just all these, all these little bits. How many places in the UK that you recycle that? Because when I did a check, high impact polystyrene, it's, it's not. It's, it's negligible. There's a, there's, a yeah. company, there's a company we're talking to at the moment that's got a, got, it's got a new unique process. It's not market available at the moment, but they can chop a car up, and they can chop a car up, and they can take the metal out, and they can take the aluminium out. They can even now take the plastic out and, and segregate the plastic at a molecular level by a float process. Now, the other thing that's coming for kits, and this is not, this hasn't been done on this one, is we can now go to a monomer-based. Uh, all plastic use a monomer in them. We can now go to 100% uh, recycled monomer. 
So yes, it would increase the price of the plastic, but you can make it from recycled cooking oil. So, so potentially, yeah, we're, yeah, we're, yeah. potentially we're at the point where instead mm. of having, yes, this is an oil-based material, we could actually have a kit that is 100% plant-based. But then, would, yeah, but then you got to think about, what about like, the, the glues that are used, the paints that are added to it, would all, that be affected all, by... All, 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 these, all these have an effect. And again, yeah. you know, I, think, I think where plastics gets a bad press is, you know, it's how you take the view on it. My view is plastic is the most, one of the most sustainable materials that we've got. It's how it's managed, it's how it's used. Yeah. So this is, you know, if you're going to build this and build it properly, this is something that would be kept for a number of years. Mm. And yes, yes, okay, you can recycle it, you can do other mm. things with it, but you know, it's not a plastic knife or fork. Yeah, you know, this is something that that means something. Mm. Um, and yeah, as with all plastics, if it's used correctly, if it's controlled mm. correctly, yeah. you know, if it's, I mean, Lego. Yeah. You look at Lego. You know, I've still got Lego that I had from yeah. the 1970s, and yeah. it's done me. It's done yeah. my son. It's back up in the loft. It'll probably hopefully do my grandson yeah. one day. So you find it in your toe, like when that's you're it, yeah, that's it. Like, it? Yeah, I've, got, I've got the scar on my knee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah. one. Yeah. 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 So what we're trying to do is, yes, we have an ethical uh, responsibility. You know, we're eco yeah. registered, so we're registered mm. to say that you know it's non-slavery. You know, we're, we're a control process. Say so target zero landfill. That's, yeah. that's what we're going for. Brilliant. You know, yeah. that. And yes, there's an environmental process. There's a commercial side to it because plastic's very expensive now, and anything we put in the bin. Yeah. Yeah. Has a, yeah. As a as a knock on effect commercially. So that's just paper, is it? Paper. That's just a, paper. Yeah. So yeah, it, yeah. it complies to Amazon, um, uh, the, yeah, the, the, yeah. the standard for dispatching and the recycling. Yeah. So yeah. no plastic there. The box is a little bit different. Unfortunately, we, we, we have to use clear tabs on the box. But again, very very small amount of material that's used. Yeah. But again, you know, these are things that we're continually looking at. You know, what is what's mm. practical, what's commercially viable, and obviously mm. what's the right thing to be doing. So again. All the leaflets we bring in, the barcoding we do here, that's all done in house. Yeah, yeah. yeah so we, we, we've got. That's excellent. It's, it's, it's closing that loop, anything on yeah. in that chain that, 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 keeps, us, that keeps, us, uh, keeps us busy. Mm. But say, in terms of actually production, you know, you can see the big, you know, there's, there's one in this machine over here. So this is a big machine that's got one of the largest fruits in the uh, that we're producing mm. at the moment. That's not running, thanks, obviously, it's noisy. So we need we expect, when you guys are gone, we're going to turn it on tonight <laughs> yeah. and we'll run it overnight. Mm. But so the bigger the tool, the bigger the machine. So if you're a day late with your, with your kit, it's because of us. <laughs> <laughs> Well done. Yeah. 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 We're going to get the bear cap done, yeah. yeah. We're done. Yeah. Yeah. Mate, I really appreciate that. Thank you so Pleasure. much. Pleasure. It's been Pleasure. brilliant. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. So I hope that video was informative for you so you can see like behind the scenes of where your kit will come from. It was fantastic. I really again want to thank Mark Thompson from Plastec who showed us around. Um, it was brilliant, absolutely fantastic day, really enjoyed myself, met up with some really good content creators, you know, my good friends Model Minutes and Plastic Alchemist, also met up with a guy called World of Wayne, really interesting character he was too, great channel, um, uh, Gary Stuff was there as well, we also had um, a lot of the magazines there, Tamiya Magazine, Airfix Magazine, and um, Phoenix Scale Modeling, which is a, a really good magazine to look hold, uh, to get hold of too. Um, also, I've kind of signed myself up to March the 10th. There's a 48-hour build-a-thon for the uh, Models for Heroes charity. So keep an eye on that because uh, Model Associate, Model Officer was there. Great YouTube channel as well. He was there uh, looking at this kit with us as well with the guys from um, Models for Heroes. So quite a packed day. There's going to be another couple of videos about this as well. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. Again, folks, if you'd like to become a channel member, please, this really does help the channel. There's a, a join button below and prices start from $1.99. On the screen are the people who are members of this channel who are helping this channel as well. And I appreciate their financial support with this uh, work I'm doing. Um, if you like the video, click like. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, ring that bell, click all, and you'll be notified when I release a new video. Any questions, any comments, please just leave them down below because I will try my best to reply. And if you have any specific questions that you need asking, I can always go to FX and ask them for you as well. That's it. Great time, great videos. And if you want to see the unboxing of this kit, click here and if you want to see other videos in relation to my airfix channel click here well that was interesting 
I hope you enjoyed that this video and same as him please uh, subscribe to my channel and hit the like button and if you have any comments please put in comments I will, I will always listen to comments if you have questions I will always ask, ask answer your questions anyways that's it for now and uh, thanks for watching and remember, every build's an adventure, so go make it awesome. And we'll talk to you later. Bye.